It is finally time. Draft day for a lot of other teams, not the Browns, unfortunately. I mean, it is draft day, but we know Cleveland does not get on the clock until pick 74, barring a trade. I don't see them moving into round one. But you know what? We have some rumors to hit on surrounding the NFL draft, and we'll see if it makes sense for the Browns to interject into some of these rumors. Now, make sure to subscribe first things first if you have not already for two reasons. One, you don't want to miss any single Browns draft pick analysis we will have for every single selection they make. And two, we're super close to our next milestone, 18,500 subscribers. So 46 people watching that have not subscribed, please consider going ahead and doing so. So with that being said, let's just talk about the latest trade slash draft buzz right now and if it makes sense for Cleveland. So the first story is Chase Young because the commanders announced they are not picking up his fifth year option. So it's a bit bizarre and then it makes people wonder, huh, could Chase Young be available for a trade because this is his last year under contract with Washington? Now, had they picked up his fifth year option, it would have cost them $17.4 million. Now, if they decide like a bunch of other teams that didn't pick up fifth-year options in the past and then want to put the franchise tag on because they want to, you know, remedy their mistake. Well, the franchise tag next year for a defensive end, I'm going to project it to be around 20-ish million. It might be even closer to 21 million. So if you look at those numbers, you kind of think, why do they not pick up his fifth-year option, right? If he balls out next year and looks like the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year that he once was... Well, they're going to cost themselves three to four million dollars. Why not pick up the seventeen point four million dollar tab and see if he can return to his Pro Bowl kind of level of play? Now, Chase Young's career, unfortunately, he has dealt with a lot of injuries the last two seasons. Really, just the ACL tear that he just did not rehab all that well in twenty twenty two. He only played in three games, recorded just five tackles. I'm not quite sure what was going on in Landover. I don't know if there was a level of frustration that he did not rehab maybe as well as they would have hoped if that was on him, if it was all on his knee, what the diagnosis was. But we're talking about a guy who in his rookie season had seven and a half sacks. So there's plenty of runway for Chase Young to have a great NFL career. Now, when it comes to trading for the former Ohio State Buckeye, it's hard to pinpoint what his trade value is, right? What do you offer for a player who was once a top pick in the NFL draft, but he hasn't played much football the last two seasons? And then there is a big kind of cloud up there. That's why didn't Washington pick up his fifth-year option, right? We're talking about a guy that was a top pick of theirs just three seasons ago. He had a phenomenal rookie season. Big-time bummer with the ACL injury in season two. Why not pick up year five and see what you can do with one more year under rookie control? Is there something more to this is what I'm getting at, right? Do they not like Chase Young, the person in the locker room? Is that why they're not picking up his fifth-year option? Or is it purely because they don't believe he is going to be worth $17.4 million? Seems a bit bizarre not to take a chance on $17.4 million for what could be one of the best pass rushers in football. And if so, that's an absolute bargain. Now, when it comes to his trade value, Josina Anderson tweeting out today, the consensus I heard this morning from league sources on reported Chase Young trade talk earlier this a.m. Highly unlikely unless the commanders are offered a deal they can't refuse. Another added like two first rounders, market reaction may consider that high. I think this is Washington leaking stuff to Josina Anderson saying, we want two first rounders, wink, wink. We know that we're not going to get that. So when a team makes a call and we say two first, that's the starting price. But we can be talked down to just one first, which is maybe more than what his true value is at this point. And it's hard to say. We're talking about a player that has played only 12 games the last two years and comes off a really bad ACL injury. If I had to take a stab at it and what the Browns could realistically offer and not just include Greg Newsom, just to include him because that's the fun thing to do, I think maybe it's... This year's third round pick, number 74, and next year's second round pick for Chase Young in a fifth, that probably doesn't get it done if I'm being honest with you guys. 
but that's probably the best slash most realistic offer I can make for Cleveland's on Cleveland's behalf to land Chase Young. Now, we're going to talk about another Washington commander in just a moment, but the NFL draft is here, and we will be live starting at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 o'clock Central today for night one of the NFL Draft. So come hang out with yours truly over there. I will be doing some live coverage over on our main channel, and we will have wall-to-wall -wall coverage for days two and three of the NFL Draft. Moving on to the next Washington commander that could be in the trade market. That is Montez Sweat, another former first-round pick, this one coming from Mississippi State. Now, he is rumored to be available for a trade as he is currently playing or scheduled to play on his fifth-year option, and then he'll be a free agent in 2024. Now, I think a trade for either of these players would also mean that team immediately gives them a contract extension doesn't make a ton of sense to give up good assets just for one year. I think if a team trades for them, they see a long-term future. That's why they're giving up premium day one or day two draft picks. Now, Montez Sweat has been extremely productive as more or less a second fiddle, right? Between Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, and Chase Young, and Montez Sweat, that's a nasty front four for Washington. They all sort of take turns being the number one pass rusher on their team. But he's coming off an eight-sack season and 14 tackles for loss. He would be an immediate number two edge rusher on this roster. No questions asked right behind Miles Garrett. So what could it cost to get Montez Sweat? I don't think it would cost as much as Chase Young because I don't think Montez Sweat's ever going to be an NFL Defensive Player of the Year. But I think Chase Young could have that type of career. So I've got Washington getting a third, pick 98, and a fifth, which is lowballing them. They could probably get more. The issue is I don't have more to offer. I don't have a first or a second to give up for Montez Sweat or Chase Young. So this is sort of a Hail Mary type trade where for whatever reason, Washington, new ownership, maybe new direction, they're dying to move on from these guys. No one's giving them what they want and they decide, yep, Cleveland's the best offer we've got. We're not getting a lot of interest from the rest of the league. This is a bad trade on our half, but sure, let's send them over for some day two or day three picks. Now, I will say I don't think the Browns have a good shot of landing either of these players, but we are talking about, in my opinion, the most aggressive general manager in football, Andrew Barry. So never rule out A-B when it comes to trades. I am sure that they are having long conversations, maybe not long. They're having conversations in Berea right now about trading for one of these two players. Maybe the conversation goes something like, hey, Andrew, should we try and trade for Chase Young? Stupid scout, we don't have enough to get him. Ah, you're right, moving on. Or maybe they are picking up the phone and they are calling Washington to say what is the asking price for one of these two players. They're doing their homework. That is what I want to get across here. Now, remember, it is more than just trading for the player, right? You also have to give him a new contract extension if you're a good GM. I don't think you trade for Chase Young or Montez Sweat to just have them for one season. So do the Browns forecast having the money to give them big fat contracts in 2024 and beyond? It's looking a bit dicey right now for them to be giving out a lot more money when you've got, you know, Deshaun Watson, Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward. Like you're paying a lot of big tabs right now. David Njoku, Wyatt Teller, Joel Petonio, Nick Chubb. Amari Cooper, I'm like, you're going to move on from some of those guys probably after this year, but I don't know if Andrew Barry has deep enough pockets to then give out, you know, 20 plus million dollar per year contracts to Chase Young or Montez Sweat. Now, if you had to pick one to trade for, who would it be? The former Ohio State Buckeye, the legend Chase Young, or the Mississippi State Montez Sweat? Let me know what you're thinking down below. Now, before we get on out of here, there's not a ton out there, if I'm being honest with you guys, for the Browns and draft rumors. They don't pick until 74. They have no round one buzz. So I thought we could end today's video with a fun segment. Let's talk about draft day. I think everyone watching probably slash hopefully rewatched Kevin Costner's draft day 2014 film. And I rewatched it like all of you guys did last night. And it reminds me every single year how bonkers and unbelievable and wildly outrageous this movie is, but I still keep coming back. It is an average movie. 
at best, if I'm being real with you. Um, it's so corny, but it's about the draft, and it's about the Browns in the draft, so I keep wanting to rewatch it, mostly just to see the B-roll shots of the Browns' facilities and whatnot, because, hey, football in April, yes, that's that's First Energy Stadium. That's the Browns' stadium. I want to see more of that. Like, that's, you know, like dog to a water bowl type of thing here. But Hollywood, they should get arrested for some of the war crimes they had in this movie. First thing first, I have a long list, and it's more than just these five things. The Browns went linebacker, off-ball linebacker, it appears, too, with Vontae Mack, and a running back at picks one and seven. Are you kidding me right now? Or one and six? Wherever Washington ended up getting the Seahawks, ended up getting Bo Callahan, which I don't even know for sure they did draft Bo Callahan, but that is the selection, a linebacker and a running back in the top ten? Fireable offense in 2023. But maybe worse than that was that the non-ball knowers in Hollywood thought, yeah, let's get Wisconsin to be the college that produces a Heisman winning quarterback that's going to go first overall. No chance in hell. But even worse than that, I think, as it continues to get worse and worse, remember when the Browns traded back into round one after going Vontae Mack at number one? Vontae Mack no matter what? All it cost them from Jacksonville was three seconds for the six overall pick? That would never happen in a million years. Or, maybe even worse, and I use Alex Smith's picture because I think he's as close as it gets to, what's the quarterback's name? Brian Drew, thank you, Roly. We're supposed to believe that an eighth-year quarterback coming off what appeared to be a season-ending knee injury is just now hitting his prime? That is the cruelest thing to sell Browns fans on. Imagine being a Browns fan. Your team trades up to get number one. You're getting the Heisman quarterback. And then they go, not so fast. We're going to run it back with our eighth-year quarterback, Alex Smith more or less. And then we're going to go to get a linebacker because that's what get butts in seats. And funny enough, if that all wasn't crazy enough for you, they have the fastest plane in the world in Cleveland, the shortest flight in aviation history. Maybe this is what um, Eric Bachman from Silicon Valley is. This is what Aviato is. The shortest flight in aviation history, as Daz Blue from Twitter replied to me saying, funniest part of draft day movie was the Browns owner leaving Radio City Music Hall in New York right after the first round pick was made and getting to the Browns facility before pick seven. I did the kind of math here. I think from Radio City to Teterboro Airport, maybe 20 minutes. I've never done that commute before, but I'll soft 20 minutes. He's an NFL owner. They move fast. He gets on the private PJ, gets on the private jet, the PJ, and maybe from the time he gets out of the car to the moment they get in the air, 10 minutes goes by. They still got a taxi. They still got to talk to air traffic control. It's New York City. It's a busy airspace. You're telling me in that 30-minute time span, 20 minutes goes by until pick six goes on. Because I think from one to six, maybe 50 to 55 minutes elapses. So in 20 minutes, he got from taking off from Teterboro to landing in Cleveland, getting to Berea, and being in the war room. Like, that is the most ridiculous part of this movie. But I still love it. I still come back every single year. Now, my Vontae Mack this year, it's not a first-round guy but it's Jamie Robinson. I've been talking about Jamie Robinson, I think back in like November or December when I first started to look ahead at the draft. I would love the Browns to get him in round three. Jamie Robinson is our Vontae Mack. One more thing on draft day. You know that assistant that Kevin Costner has, Sonny Weaver, who gives him that like advice on Bo Callahan? He's like, ask me about who went to his birthday party. That guy did nothing for a living until the day of the draft, he decides, now I will go to work and dig up everything you need to know about Bo Callahan. What was he doing for three months before the draft? Just no intel, no sort of background information on any of these prospects. And the day of the draft, he's like, all right, let me make some phone calls and I'll dig up all the dirt on Bo Callahan. You couldn't have done that in December, January, or February? So that they don't make that stupid trade in the first place? Like, that was just unbelievable. So who is your Vontae Mack this year? As I come down to earth, who is it? I'm going Jamie Robinson. Give me your Vontae Mack. Who is on your sticky note?
crumpled up in your pocket. The Browns just got to get him at 74. No other way around it. For me, it's Jamie Robinson. All right, that's going to do it for us on today's show. Enjoy the draft. I'll see everyone later. We'll be breaking down all the picks that Cleveland makes. Hit me up on Twitter, by the way, if you want to talk more Brownies football.